Okay, friends. Uh, we are talking about the DNA transcription process in prokaryotes, especially the DNA transcription process in uh, E. coli cell. And we have passed through the process like initiation of DNA transcription, then elongation of DNA transcription. Now, in this video, we'll be talking about the termination of DNA transcription process. And this is the end process, as you know, of the termination. Now, termination process uh, of prokaryotic as well as eukaryotic uh, transcription is also very important because you need to have a proper stretch of mRNA sequence because that sequence will code for a particular designated protein. So, in case of prokaryotic termination of transcription, there are two types of termination process available. One is called the intrinsic termina terminators. Intrinsic termination. Another one is called rho dependent termination. These are the two different types of termination that are available. Interesting termination as well as the rho dependent termination process. Now what happens in the intrinsic terminator process? In this intrinsic process, there is a formation of hairpin loop that helps in the termination. And that that see and this termination is a sequence specific termination, right? And the sequence is present itself in the newly synthesized RNA. That's why it is called intrinsic termination because the sequence which helps in the termination is residing inside the newly synthesized RNA. Other hand, rho dependent termination is a termination process involving a different enzyme called rho or rho unit. So, the rho factor or the rho enzyme is nothing but the helicase that we know of. It is a helicase enzyme with six different subunits or hexameric protein helicase which derive energy from ATP hydrolysis and can do the termination trick. We will be talking about each of this in a few minutes. Now, for any kind of termination, there should be a termination signal. Now, for the termination signal, remember, there isn't, uh, there is a termination proper signal present in the DNA. L just like the promoter which is having the start site or initiation site of a DNA transcription, in the similar way, there is a sequence stretch designated for the termination of this transcription in also in the, inside the DNA, right? Now, let us assume, let us assume this is the stretch of termination, this is the site for termination termination site okay so this polymerase this rna polymerase can sense things we also know that that rna polymerase along with sigma factor they sense the promoter and the start site of the transcription and also rna polymerase itself can sense the terminator sequence that is present in the dna now once it is sensing that during that time what happens let's take this picture and it is very close, this replication bubble, uh, not replication actually, sorry, it is transcription bubble. It is very much close to the termination site. So, as you can see, the RNA is being produced through this place, right? So, let us draw it, so let us say by this manner, this is the RNA produced 5 prime, this is the 3 prime direction. So, RNA has been produced like that. So, now it is encountering the termination site. So, the polymerase, the position of polymerase obviously will be now. So, it will be slightly changed condition now like this and like this for example say, right. This is the termination site. Let us say this is the termination sequence that are present there, okay. And the position of RNA polymerase will be slightly different because now the RNA polymerase will be present. somewhere here. So, this is the pole. Okay. So, as it is present now in the termination site and the RNAs keep on producing, during this time, the RNA sequence that is being produced, I try to understand here at this particular place, let us say, let us make it in a very basic manner. Let us say this is the template and the RNA that is being produced, let us draw it with the black. So, the RNA that is being produced, let us say 
CCCG and the stretch of RNA that is it is producing right and there somewhere here in this place there are GGGC is present somewhere here the presence of say and here it is a say CCCG right. Now this sequence is encoded in the RNA right it is encoded in the template DNA so now it is getting by the RNA. And this is a signal called intrinsic signal because this signal sequence is itself present in the newly synthesized RNA strand, right? So once they have this type of GC rich sequence, remember these are GC rich sequence. So as they are GC rich, you know G and C are paired with each other by three hydrogen bonds. So it's a massive power. On the other hand, Adenine with uracil pair with only two hydrogen bonds, less power. So here, this GC pairing means huge, high power. And as you can see, it is a palindrome, GGGC and CCCG. So there is a kind of complementary structure formed between the distant place. Not actually that much distant, but for your understanding sex, I, I draw it little distant apart. But actually, they are very close there. So as they are producing and keep on producing, what we can see here, again this is the template and what we will see now, let us say other sequences are added here in this direction and now these two sequences as they are complementary in nature, what they can do, they can actually form the hairpin structure this type of hairpin. How? Because try to imagine if there are C, C, C and G and in this place G, G, G and C easily they can form this type of hairpin, right? So this is the hairpin structure, three hydrogen bonds each, huge structure that is formed there. This is the hairpin structure. And not only this hairpin structure, but in the in, in this last direction of the termination site, there are a couple of U's are formed because in this termination sequence of the transcription that is present in the DNA contain lot of adenines. So now you imagine the sequence that is present as a termination sequence contains a lot of adenine or uracil mostly contains more of an adenine there. So as it is filled with adenine, so the last nucleotide sequences of RNA or last RNTPs that are added there are most of the time uracils. So polyuracil stretches are added at the end. And just before that, there is the formation of GC, high GC content formation of a hairpin loop due to the intrinsic signal as a result of G and C, high G and C content. So what it will do actually, this hairpin is very tightly attached, but the interaction between A and U is very, very weak. This is weak interaction, but this is strong interaction, actually very, very strong interaction because multiple GNCs are there. So this, this force difference, this difference in force and interaction can actually drag this RNA out from this DNA segment. So what will result after that, if I just erase it here, the thing what we can see here will be this. So this will be polyuse. So we can see something like this. So the RNA is now dissociated from the DNA. So this is the DNA template, template strand, remember? having poly A at the end, remember? So now, this RNA is completely synthesized and dissociated from the DNA. That is how they get the termination process. And this is called the intrinsic termination because it is due to the signal of GC that is present in the synthesizing RNA itself. Now the second type is the road dependent termination. 
in this case they will bring a protein called rho so let's talk about that a little bit here so now what the same thing the same things even if uh, there are rho dependent termination but still they can have this kind of intrinsic signals it's not like that that either it will have intrinsic signal or it will have rho sometimes though they require though they have intrinsic signals but they also require rho proteins there so the same thing will happen they will also form the stem loop but rho protein helps to dissociate it faster how so there are particular sequence present in a particular in a stretch of let's say let's stretch it a little bit let's say like this and there are some sequences present here lot of cytosine lots of cytosine rich regions co constantly present the cytosine rich element that is present there acts as a signal for the binding of the protein rho and that site is called as rut site it is called as rut site the rut is a small form of rho utilization site or rut site okay rho utilization site rho means you know the letter greek letter like that rho so the rho is a protein now this rut site is present rut site means more of a c protein very uh, more of a c nucleotide less of a g so the c usually in the rut site present uh, the c present more than 41% but the g present less than 5% so as you can see the characteristics of a rut site is having more of c less g so here this site is there and now the rho protein will come so let's draw the rho protein here so the rho protein remember it's a hexameric protein the protein have two different domains n terminal and c terminal this is the upper n terminal domain and c terminal domains are larger one that is present in the bottom so this is the n terminal domain c terminal domain six different subunits are there and what rho can do here rho is a rotating enzyme it can rotate and by rotating what it does actually it requires office it requires energy for this rotation and all these things and it drags the energy from atp hydrolysis it drags the energy from atp hydrolysis and actually it can just pass and can drag two different strands out from each other it can separate two strands either it can be dna dna or it can be dna rna you know the enzyme helicase that is required in the dna replication the rho is nothing but a kind of helicase that is present so what will rho do here rho will come and rho will now bind here in the rho utilization site or rut site rho binds here this is the rho protein so once the rho protein is attached here the rho protein will now migrates towards the end of the rna synthesis so it will just rotate itself it will just rotate itself using the hydrolysis of atp and migrates through this rna and and just 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 like a climbing a ladder and it releases and up to it, it it kind of plays very close here so it comes here during this part this is a rho protein that is ultimately come here during the rna dna hybrid at the end place of this of this termination signal once it reaches this rna dna hybrid what it does actually it's a clap like protein now just remember this thing let's say this is a dna this is the rna is produced both things are related they are attached with each other and let me tell it this way so these two things are attached with each other let's say these are these are adhered to each other via the hydrogen bonds now the, this is the rho protein like a clamp now the rho protein is entering here and rho protein is moving towards the end this this is the end of the synthesis so rho is moving moving and as it moves and completely passes here it can take those rna out from the dna simple as that those two are attached rho is now migrating and then taking the rna out same thing is happening here the rho is moving and as the rho passes through that last segment of the rna that is synthesized it just takes the rna out of the dna and now the rna is now free and sometimes what happens if there are g g c and g c rich sequences there so they can form the this typical type of stem loops there but alongside the rna can be free so that will be the mrna that is produced okay
So, that is the row dependent termination process. Now, sometimes during the different physical properties on conditions of environment, cell need to control the gene expression because you know gene expression it's all about expression of a particular gene because we have genes of everything in each single cell but still our liver cell functions differently than our nerve cell right so that's the reason behind the expression of certain things so sometimes what happens even though they reach this termination site cells do not think a good idea to terminate the process in those conditions sometimes though the termination signal reaches but still they need to produce it furthermore in that conditions they have certain proteins they are called anti-termination proteins which are adhered to the these are called anti-termination anti-terminators anti-terminators or anti-termination proteins which are adhered these are factors accessory proteins or accessory factors that can adhere to rna polymerase and it can provide some signal to rna polymerase to not to stop at this particular signal of transcription termination and this transcription can go on beyond the transcription termination signal in dna this may result okay and sometimes also some other anti terminators can come and bind with this row utilization region so that the row is unable to bind with it and termination is not possible that thing is under high and tight control of cell and it depends on whether what kind of condition the cell is in to select whether they need to terminate it or they need to continue the transcription right so that in a sense is a transcription termination so in this all season we have talked about initiation of transcription that elongation and termination and before that we talked about the basic overview of termination and i hope that's helpful for you undergraduate and postgraduate studies so if you like the video please do not forget to subscribe share this video and also have fun all the best